Hi everyone, welcome to Black Cat Kitchen. I hope you're all doing well. Today's a bit of a different video. We've got a bit of a life update for you. You may have seen in some of our comments that we've made a few remarks about Zelda being poorly, and I thought this was a good time to update you on what's been going on. So about a week ago, we had noticed that Zelda had lost a fair amount of weight. She was drinking a lot of water and she was vocalizing quite excessively through the night. And we just thought, this doesn't seem right. Let's get her into the vet. Let's make sure everything's okay. Um, hopefully it's nothing serious and uh, you know we can get her some treatment and move on. So on Monday afternoon, we brought her into the vets and had her looked over. They did some blood tests, they did some x-rays and uh, her creatine levels were very high, which means that she's losing kidney function. Uh, so the x-ray showed that there were some, what we thought were stones in her bladder. The vet had suggested we bring her in the next day, do an ultrasound, and we could do surgery to remove these stones to allow for her kidneys to function a little bit better and easier. That along with treatment should be a pretty good prognosis for her. So Tuesday morning, we bring her back into the vets, drop her off with them at the surgery, and just wait for that call, hoping that we're gonna have some good news, that she's done really well in surgery and that she um, is recovering really well. We received a call from the vets in the afternoon to come and pick her up and have a chat with the vet. Unfortunately, when we got there, the news wasn't good. There weren't any stones in her bladder. These were more like cysts that had shown up on the x-ray. And actually she was in um, quite serious kidney failure due to something called polycystic kidney disease. This is a genetic disease that some cats have and usually it presents itself around seven years old. So Zelda's only five. You can understand at this point, we're absolutely devastated, completely broken. Um, couldn't keep it together, to be honest with you. Uh, and because she'd been in the vets all day, she hadn't had anything to eat for 24 hours. She'd had very little to drink. We were significantly worried about her at this point. So we brought her home from the vets on Tuesday with the advice from the vet that she could go any day, any time within the next week or so, um, and to be expecting it. She was given some prescription medication from the vet to help support the kidney function and to help keep her heart pressure low uh, so that she was comfortable and uh, wasn't having sort of excessive heartbeat or anything that could cause other damage or issues. Um, and so we started administering that straight away. Now, me being me, I wasn't accepting, you know, a few days to a week. This is my baby and I love her. And I'm sure that you can all see and, and know how much we love her by by dedicating this channel to her. Uh, so I started doing some research and I started finding some uh, other people who had been through similar things. I found a blog online uh, and someone had written about their cat who was five years old, just like Zelda, and was going through this polycystic kidney disease. And um, they managed to prolong their cat's life. The cat is still alive. She's, she's now eight years old, uh, through the use of supplements and fluids and of course help from the vets. So um, she had posted about this Facebook group that deals with chronic kidney disease in cats. And I'll post the link to that below in case you've stumbled upon this video because of your cat suffering from some sort of kidney disease. These people have been absolutely just unbelievable. They have given so much advice. They've had so much experience with cats with kidney disease. And honestly, their, their information and the advice that they've given has been completely invaluable. I couldn't ask for more support than what they gave me. So a lot of them suggested subcutaneous fluids for Zelda. This is a common practice in America and in Canada, but it's not something that you see too often here in the UK. So I called my vet straight up and I said, like, is this something that we can do for her? Um, I'm happy to um, administer them myself at home, however often needs be, just to keep her hydrated. Um, I'm at this stage certain that she's not gonna make it through the night. Um, she was extremely dehydrated. Um, and how you check is just a little scruff on the back of their neck. If you pull it up, just like your skin here, if it doesn't bounce back just like that, and it stays up, that shows severe dehydration in a cat. Um, hers stayed up for far too long. So the vet was absolutely fine and supported us doing this. Whatever we could do to prolong her life, to make her feel happier and healthier, 
he was absolutely behind us with it. And um, I'll also show you some supplements that we've been using um, to help her as well. So um, first and foremost, we're using um, hemp oil, so CBD oil specifically made for cats. Um, that's really helped calm her down in terms of her vocalizations and it's made giving her her medications a lot easier. All of the medications we're giving her are either oral um, liquids so that we can just drop them into her mouth or um, via injection. Uh, and that's just the subcutaneous fluids that we're giving her through injection um, now once a day. Uh, and um, I'm also using um, something called Kidney Support Gold, which is by Pet Wellbeing. This was recommended on the group um, and it's kind of got like a bacony flavor and helps to stabilize kidney uh, function and really just help um, bind up those toxins so that um, your cat can get them out of their system. The other thing we've been using is um, Liquid Devil's Claw, which is really good as an anti-inflammatory just to help with anything that sort of might be aching or hurting because she hasn't had that complete renal support that most cats have. Uh, and that's been a really great thing as well. Of course, we're using the prescription from the vet and the um, Hartman's or the Lactated Ringer solution. This is by no means advice or vet advice. Um, if you do have an issue with your cat, please go see your vet because that's the most important thing you can do for your cat. But know that there are other alternatives out there if, if your vet has said, you know, this is the end of the road for your cat. So we started administering these on Wednesday morning as soon as I could get them uh, through the door. Thank goodness for prime shipping. And uh, I've got a few more things on the way for her to help support her and make sure she's getting all of the vitamins that she's needing uh, because she's not quite eating yet. Um, cats with kidney issues can sometimes experience nausea and then don't want to eat. So that is something that um, we've been looking at. And by Thursday, I can honestly say she was a completely different cat. She had bounced back. Today's Saturday when we're filming, she has full elasticity. Her skin bounces right back on the back of her neck. She's meowing her normal self, as you may have heard a little bit through the video. She, um, she wants to go out for her walks on her lead uh, and she's out there for a good couple of hours uh, and she's absolutely loving it. Um, her eyes are so much brighter and they had sort of like a, almost like a crusty layer around them because she was so dehydrated. Uh, and now they're just bright and they look great and she just seems her happier self. She's chirping and bumping and meowing and she's just our, our Zelda that we know and love. One thing that I've struggled with a little bit is getting her to eat, like I mentioned. Um, and I remembered a trick from one of the foster um, kitten pages that I follow on Instagram that if you're trying to trap a cat, no cat can ever resist Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, so last night off to KFC, we went, picked up a bucket of chicken and sure enough, she was all over it. Like she couldn't get enough of the, the chicken and she ended up eating a whole piece of chicken thigh just to herself, which was amazing. Of course, with bones removed, please do not feed your um, pets cooked chicken bones. They can be quite dangerous. But um, what I'm saying is there are alternatives and it's not necessarily the best food for her to be eating in terms of her full nutrition. But because she's lost so much weight, our main focus right now is just getting some of that weight back on her, stabilizing her weight so she doesn't lose any more weight and just monitoring her and making sure that she's happy um, and, and keeping healthy in that sense. So it's been a bit of a whirlwind week for us and needless to say, it's been um, emotionally draining and exhausting. Um, but we truly believe in uh, the power of positivity and any positive vibes that you want to send out to Zelda, we would be most appreciative for. And then we can prolong her life for another couple of years and just enjoy every moment with her. So thanks so much for watching. I know this wasn't what you're expecting of a Black Cat Kitchen video. I promise we've got more recipes coming up, um, but that was our little Zelda update. Thanks so much and we'll see you all next time.